Chirping birds, insects, animals, and bustling traffic mixed with the lilting of people chattering in Portuguese all around him. The smell of mangoes, pineapple, exotic fragrances. Piss and petrol filled his nose. The marks of big city life. Retired LAPD Captain Mike Harrigan felt like he was in a different world until he stepped inside the modern convention center and heard a familiar voice. Weapons of the future! The best new technology! Load them up! Blow them away! It was a voice he hadn't heard in 25 years and never thought to hear again. Not since his time at the Los Angeles Police Department. A voice from a time of one of the biggest crises in his entire 40-year career. And here he was in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, of all places. And the former Fed, Garber, was standing right in front of him. Under a bright neon sign that read Legends, Inc. Legendary Tech. Legendary Power. After what they'd both barely survived in Los Angeles... All they'd seen, Harrigan was a burned-out ex-cop who occasionally got invited to speak at urban police conferences like this one, and Garber had moved on to selling weapons and high-tech destruction. Harrigan wondered which of them had learned the most from their experience with the alien bounty hunter. Vendor booths lined both sides of the long entryway, leading to exhibit halls, theaters, meeting rooms, and more of the Rio de Janeiro Convention Center. Crowds of cops, military types, private security, mercenaries, and... Moore examined the wares as Garber hefted a long, sleek, heavy-looking weapon. A rifle of some sort with a laser scope, attached grenade launcher, and two cartridge bays. A chubby, sunburned, flower-shirted American tourist poster child and his shorter, round wife stopped and smiled. Awesome, the man said. Me and my pebbles need something like that there back in Texas. Garber smiled his best salesman smile. Totally legal, folks. I can set you up today. From behind the Americans, a tall woman with long black hair and seductively tanned skin approached with her companion, a shorter, bulkier, older man with a well-developed paunch like Harrigan's. Both wore sidearms, holstered at their belts, despite their three-piece brown suits as they turned. Harrigan spotted badges hanging from their belts. Detectives. Amigo! What is that thing? the woman asked in the lilting Brazilian accent that had grown so familiar. Ah, Policia, Garber said, smiling broadly as he met her eyes. This is the answer to all your problems, officers. The LI-547B1. The only assault rifle you'll ever need once you own it. It looks heavy, like a monstrosity, her partner said, shaking his head. You expect us to run with that? Garber grunted. Why run when everybody else will? Once you whip out this baby, it's over. You can stop them from 60 yards away. Pow! He chuckled. <laughs> Problem entering a building? One blast from the grenade, and you can blow your own entryway right through a wall. Blam! As he described it, Garber demonstrated each move by aiming the weapon and pretending to shoot, shaking it for emphasis at each explosion. Harrigan rolled his eyes, and the two detectives exchanged a look. If it's even legal, the female said. Oh, trust me, down here it's totally legal, or else I wouldn't be here, Garber said. Her companion shook his head again. It's insane, amigo. The department would never approve that. What if I told you they had? Just then the floor vibrated, and Harrigan heard the distant thrum of a big explosion outside. As people around them muttered and exchanged looks, Harrigan and the two cops raced for the door simultaneously, the automatic glass opening wide in their path to emit distant screams and further explosions. They stepped down onto the sidewalk and scanned the area surrounding the convention center. Their eyes finding a nearby hillside slum where smoke drifted into this deep blue sky. A few buildings in flames as people yelled and scattered down the perilously per narrow, steep sidewalks and passages between shacks, trying to get away. Garber ran up to join them then. What the hell was that? It's Cortado Central, the male detective said as he squinted toward the hillside. A favela. Slum. Another explosion rocked the hillside. Debris, flames, and smoke flying outward to form a funnel. Mera, 
What is going on? The female detective inquired. Holy shit, Garber explained, spotting something through his weapon scope. What? Harrigan asked. Garber looked at him, recognition dying in his eyes. Harrigan, LAPD. Retired two years now, Harrigan replied with a nod. Garber? Garber grunted and handed him the weapon, pointed high on the hillside where a building burned. Through the scope, Harrigan soon saw it too. A body hanging from a tree, human and bloody, and it had been skinned head to toe. The sight was one that had haunted Harrigan's nightmares for 25 years, ever since the Predator. He couldn't believe he was seeing it again. It can't be, Harrigan muttered. You know it is, Garber replied. What? the female detective asked anxiously. They're under attack, Garber said, taking his gun back. Time to arm up, baby. Garber turned back from the convention center. Hang on, let me get my stuff. And he ran back inside.